Here's what we're layering on top of, a blue graduation from the paint box, and here's what's on top of that, color bars with scribe type. Stick that in the ADO, and one of the first things I usually do is double the normal perspective from 0.06 to 0.12 so that it looks like we're looking at it through a wide lens. This is the global move that I'm thinking about for this demonstration. It doesn't look like much right now. It is a 10 second move that is only a camera move. Only the point of reference is moving. We take the corresponding matte signal from the ADO and route it through a switcher effects bank into the A62 key in. I'll explain why in a moment. But that gives us the finished composite when we make our first A62 pass, here it is, ADO over the color graduation. We'll be adding a number of passes on top of that, each one layered with the ADO. Here's pass number two. Positioned in the ADO to be due north of layer number one in order to build up a repetitive grid type of background. This second pass is laid down. It's yet another 15 second edit with the ADO triggered by the CMX on the same frame as in the first pass and with the previous layer as the playback side of the A62 disc. Same deal with layer number three. It's positioned off to the right. It is exactly the same global move on the ADO, exactly the same trigger point, and exactly the same deal of going back and forth, back and forth from one side of the A62 to the other. Now we're laying in layer four and I can dissolve it in and out because I've routed the key signal in through the effects bank of the switcher and by dissolving it back and forth, that's what you get. Layer five, same deal. We can keep adding layers in a geometric pattern by displacing the source object by regular intervals, basically as long as we want. During each pass, the ADO displaces the source image by a consistent amount to create this grid of layers. The global move remains the same. And as long as the global move is right, then additional layers don't even have to be on the same plane. In fact, you don't want them to be. Let's take layer 10 here and bring it closer to us, move it off to the right, up a little bit. And since we are routing the key signal in to the A62 via the switcher, as you see when we dissolve it out or in, it becomes more or less transparent. So we're gonna make layer 10 a transparent move. It's a square the same size as the ground layers, but it's now closer to us, closer to the camera tracking this move. Being able to vary the transparency via the switcher and under editor control is a very powerful tool. As long as the global move remains the same, the layers can be different sizes, different positions, and even have their own trajectory. Here's layer 14 taking off for the northeast. We kind of catch up with it later with exactly the same camera move. Again, it has exactly the same global move, but now the object has its own course and speed. Of course, there's no reason we can't use moving video on some of these layers as long as the editor, the person, not the machine, calculates the offset so that we see the scene we want to see when the image appears on camera. You can't change the ADO trigger because, again, we're dealing with a global move. It is still exactly the same camera move, exactly the same 15 second edit, and the ADO is still firing at exactly the same frame. Now it's a little more exciting to take a paint box image and add that as a layer onto our composite. We have to take the matte signal that corresponds to the same shape as the irregular cutout, store it off, and feed it into the ADO's digimat because that way the ADO key signal then is exactly the shape of the irregular cutout, giving us a nice clean key signal over the composite. You know, one of the things in NTSC when you blow up a paint box cutout in the ADO, as we're doing here, you can really see some of the NTSC artifacts and of course some of the general noise that's introduced by the ADO itself. Those little dots are the NTSC artifacts and the noise, well, isn't too bad this particular day. But that's why we create these elements as large as possible so that when we stick them in the ADO and move them around, we lose as little as possible. So now we've stuck in two or three of these sevens as the final layer on this big mess, a simulation of an actual layered project. Perhaps you'd like to take a look now at a little more real world scenario on how these layers can be used to create a piece of animation. Here's a project I worked on last year. I started with a graduation and then created layers of texture going down as the camera rotates around them. Then I added layers of texture going up as the camera does exactly the same thing. Then off to the right, I added these three lines that assemble on the right side of the screen just as the global move ends. Then I created a paint box frame to hold shots that I had picked of various sports elements in action. 
and I added kind of a switcher glow across each one of these as I laid them down on a work tape. These were placed into exactly the same global move, a couple more layers and some music was added, and this is what we came up with, something like this. The same layering approach was used in all the headline news elements. Here I created some switcher ground planes, some switcher wipes for searchlights, added a layer of mountains that uh, cut off on one side, but we soon covered those up, added some more mountain layers, a blimp, and well, before you know it, we came up with the open for Hollywood Minute, and it looks something like this. What's this guy doing looking down? And what's this guy doing looking up? And what's the deal with this ampersand anyway? Well, that was the best way to create these particular elements so that they could be layered like this to create Headline News's dollars and cents open. Here's the finished product. Notice the lighting changes on these elements as they come panning by. Just a switcher wipe between two different backgrounds. We add some large type, again broken up as big as possible on the screen into individual pieces. Then I created a Sony Trinitron, rendered it, illustrated it on the paint box, and put in video shot around the headline news newsroom and control room, added that soft wipe across, and some other news elements, color bars from other places, computer readouts. Of course, it's always nice to have a shot of the space shuttle taking off and sometimes I even like to stick in an old friend from college. All of these in teeny tiny TV screens as part of the open. <laughs> 